ladies, it's Kristen. Uh, I'm really sorry that last week's video was so delayed. I just got it posted this morning. Uh, it's just, last week was just crazy and there wasn't a moment to process the video and I had to do some processing to put it together because it got cut off in the middle. So anyways, I'm sorry about that and I'm hoping that I'm going to get this video up for you uh, much more quickly. So this week we're talking about Phoenix at eight weeks because he's just hit nine weeks. So we're talking about his life last week. Um, and I feel like last week was a really good week. I'm really, really happy. I feel like we've started to turn the corner on getting some consistency in daytime sleep. Um, so that makes me really, really happy. It's not completely smooth sailing. His morning nap this morning didn't go very well, for example. But I feel like we're definitely... Um, definitely getting back into it. I'm sorry, y'all, that I'm dressed like a total bum today, but, you know, that's life. I didn't have to go out anywhere. Um, but yeah, so we are, we're doing pretty well. I found a strategy that helps. I can't remember if I was doing this last week or not, if I, if I had started this last week, but what I've been doing, uh, is I, well, Phoenix has been, he stays in bed in the morning when I get up. That's one good thing. I've been getting up early, not not quite as early as I would like every morning, but most mornings pretty consistently early, like around 5 to 5.30, and I'm trying to get that to where it's around 5 because that time in the morning before my kids get up and a nice chunk of time before my kids get up really, really helps me. So, and I'm definitely feeling up to it at this point. Most of the mornings when I don't get up, it's because he happens to be nursing right then. And I do think I've talked about that, that I've... I try to get up around 3, 3.30ish, or, or at least be awake to encourage him to nurse so that he may, so that he'll be sleeping, but, and I just have my Fitbit set to vibrate at that time, no audible alarm, because I don't want to bother Scott, um, but I, sometimes I think I just don't notice the Fitbit's alarm, like if I'm sleeping pretty deeply. In fact, I'd say most of the time I don't. I do notice it later on in the morning, but at that time in the night, I guess I'm just asleep, which is good. You know, so I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to set an audible alarm, at least not right now. But sometimes if he's nursing, like when my other alarm goes off at 5, then I drift back off to sleep because I want him to finish nursing. So I kind of have two alarms set off, set up 10 minutes apart from each other to try and help me get up. But this morning, even for example, I, I it was... They went off at like 4.55 and then 5.05 and I didn't get up to like 5.20 or something. Um, so I wasn't completely asleep, but I also didn't get up because he was nursing. But that's life. I know that things are, are going to go better. So anyways, what I've been doing um, is I've, I've been going in and like around 6.15 or so I get my other kids up. And so I've been calling them to get them up. We're actually doing a bean counter jar thing, which is an idea. I got from a parenting book that I'm reading right now. So if the kids get up on time, they get a bean. And I think I'm going to up the bounty to two beans. <laughs> um, but if they get up on time, they get a bean to put in the bean jar. It's just a quart-sized mason jar. And when we get to a full bean jar, we're going to have a movie marathon day for family fun. There's also some other things they can do to earn beans, but that's one of them getting up on time. And it seems to be working pretty well so far because what was happening is I'd call them and then I'd have to go back down and back down and back down, which is just not fit in a busy day. So they are motivated right now by the beans. So they've pretty much been getting up. I also call my oldest two a little bit earlier than everybody else so they can get up and get a shower. Um, and then I call everybody. But when I call everybody around 6.15, I've been coming back in and nursing him again. So he's usually still asleep at that point, pretty much always still asleep at that point. But he would often wake again and I want him to sleep till nine. So um, so coming back in and nursing him like around 6.15 and it only takes a little bit because he's basically asleep. So I just nurse him for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, and he's, you know, he's been sleeping, bless you, the entire time. Uh, and then he stays asleep. This morning, he woke up when I came in to get to to get dressed and get ready for the day a few minutes after that because everything previous to this has been done in my pajamas. Um, but he was just starting to stir, so I just picked him up and checked his swaddle and then put him in the rock and play, and he fell right back asleep and slept till I came in to get him. I come in and get him at about 8.45 or so so that I can dress him and check all his creases and make sure that they're clean and change his diaper and everything. So anyways, that's been working really well to help him kind of stretch to that period that I want. And then we've been working on the morning nap. 
And getting him down for the morning nap has been going real smoothly too. I feel like getting him to stretch till nine has kind of helped everything else fall into place. It's kind of a two steps forward, one step back. Like I said, this morning's morning nap didn't go very well. I mean, he went down for the nap okay. But then he woke up after only a little bit. And he didn't want to settle back to sleep. We let him fuss and cry for a few minutes. And finally, Scott gave up and went in and got him and put him in the sling. Because it was obvious he wasn't going to fall back asleep within just a few minutes. Sometimes he does. Like, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before... He was napping in his rock and play. This was for the afternoon nap, and Scott had come in to take a nap as well. And um, when Scott got up out of bed, he dropped his book, which the book is like this thick, like one of those fantasy medieval like super books. And he dropped the book on the floor, and when he dropped the book, I think it startled Phoenix because he started crying. I was out front, so I didn't come in here because I knew Scott was in here with him. Um, and... Scott decided, you know, he was going to hop in the shower real quick, and then he would get Phoenix. So by the time he got out of the shower, which was just a minute later, a couple minutes later, because he just hopped in and hopped out, Phoenix had settled himself. So I thought that Scott had picked him up, and Scott thought I had come in and picked him up. But he had kind of settled himself back to sleep. So anyways, um, I sometimes if he if he cries just a minute or two, he will settle himself back to sleep. So we've been letting him do that, and other times he kind of coos. That's something else that's been nice is putting him to bed at night, which is something I hadn't been doing. But there's been probably three or four nights that I've nursed him. I try for naps not to nurse him to sleep. I try and nurse him when he wakes up from the nap. But for bedtime, I do nurse him down. Um, it's just a nice cuddly time, but there's been a couple times when he's drifted off and then he's kind of woken back up and it's been like nine or so and I really want to try and wind down and start doing my own stuff to get ready for bed. And so I've just brought him in and laid him down and, and yeah, I lay him in my bed. I think I mentioned this before, you know, this is not advised or anything, but that's what I do. I lay him down in my bed because I'm going to come in in just a few minutes and lay down with him. And I've put him down awake just kind of babbling and he's babbled himself off to sleep because when I come in a little bit later, he's asleep. So that's been really nice. So I'm, I'm encouraged that, you know, he's working on good sleep habits and at eight weeks, you know, I'm not worried about really how far apart is. I don't want him nursing like every 30 minutes, but two and a half hours, three hours, sometimes every two hours, that's okay too. But, um... And I'm not so worried about his nursing, but I do really want him to, to get in a good nap schedule. Just because with a really busy family, it's really nice to have that predictable schedule. And I feel like when I relaxed, and especially when I found some strategies that worked to get him to where I wanted him to wake up in the morning, like I said, that's kind of helped everything else fall into place. Another thing, and I actually brought it to show you. So this is a hand-me-down from a sister, which is why it's pinky purpley. But anyways, you know, we can't, these are, this is a miracle blanket and it's a well-loved miracle blanket. As you can tell, it's got holes in it. Oh, there's the hole. But anyways, miracle blankets are pretty expensive and we only have two. I used to have two in this color and one blue one and one of these has gone missing. So I only have two surviving miracle blankets, but this is a swaddling blanket. So you lay the baby in here and then you swaddle them up. I think I might have a video somewhere, I'll have to look, where I show swaddling in a miracle blanket versus a muslin blanket. And so I have been swaddling him in the miracle blankets at night and then in a muslin blanket for his naps during the day. But I only had a miracle blanket handy a couple days ago. I think all the muslin blankets were in the wash or something. And so I swaddled him in those. And I feel like he does, he sleeps better in the miracle blanket. So I've been putting him in the miracle blanket consistently. I still have the swaddle blankets because they're just lovely for a light blanket anywhere around the house. Um, and I have one because it's easy to pack in my bag when we're out and about in case I need to swaddle him. But I actually think that if we're going to go to a berth, I'm probably going to pack the miracle blanket. Another thing I really like about the miracle blanket is it has this, this is the little foot pocket, but it's really easy to swaddle without the baby in the foot pocket. And so if I was at a birth and he was a little unsettled and I wanted to swaddle him, I could swaddle him without his legs in so that I could still put him, I wouldn't put him on my back like that, but I could still put him on my front with his legs out in the carrier and maybe walk him to sleep and then he would be swaddled so I could then try and put him down. Um, 
to sleep, like on a mat on the floor or something, you know, on a, on a blanket on the floor or, or something like that. So anyways, I'm always thinking, I haven't gotten called for a birth yet, but I'm always thinking, like, how are we going to manage a birth? So that's something I'll probably stuff the, the miracle blanket in the go bag as well since it does seem to keep him a little bit calmer. Um, other things going on, let's see, what else has been going on, Phoenix? We had a friend, uh, one of my girlfriends, I, I wanted to find, because, oh, another thing, and I'm going to put a clip on the end of this, is he started being happy for short periods of time under the little, um, you know, we have one of the little play mats that has the bar with toys dangling down. I, I took a, a video clip of him, so I'll put that on the end of this video. Uh, so he's started being content sitting under that like he gets up nurses and then he'll be content sitting under that for you know for for maybe 10 minutes or so not long but you know he's content under there for a few minutes and then he seems to want to sit up but sometimes if as long as he can see us he's happy sitting up so we had purchased a bouncy seat with Sadie for when she wanted to sit up but I really needed hands free. And anyways, I couldn't find it. I can't find it anywhere, so I don't know where that is either. So many things going missing. I'm sure it's in its box somewhere and we'll probably find it after he's outgrown it, of course. But I mentioned it to a friend and she said she had like a little mini swing that I could borrow if I wanted to because she doesn't currently have a baby. So I was at her house and so I brought that home and he really, really likes it. So it is just literally a little mini swing. I can bring it maybe next week and show it to y'all. I don't know if you can buy them, you know, buy this model anymore because she said she's had it a long time, like since her oldest was a baby who is nine. But uh, it doesn't have batteries in it, and I decided we're not going to go buy batteries for it because what I found is as soon as you put a baby in them, they don't swing very fast, and as soon as you especially put a big baby in them, they really don't swing at all. And Phoenix is massive, so I figure, you know, it's not even worth going and paying 10 bucks for four C-cell batteries to put in the swing. But we can swing it manually, you know, with a hand or something. And so it's just small. It's basically like the size of a bouncy seat. Uh, so we can easily move it around. And he, if we put him in that, and then like when I'm doing a homeschool lesson on the couch, I can sit on the couch, have the other child right here, and then Phoenix in the swing is on the floor facing us. He's pretty happy. And we can kind of just push with our hand or our foot to swing him a little bit. And then he's really happy. So even if he starts to kind of grump a little bit sitting still, he's happy with it swinging a little bit. So that's worked really, really well. And that's been really, really nice for those times like homeschool lessons when I really want hands free to be reviewing a textbook or something, a checklist or something with my with an with an older child, so that has worked really well. And I, I also think that that will work really well. Like if I want to type a quick email or something, be able to put them in that. Um, and another thing that I found like a really positive. This is mostly, I mean, all the strategies have helped, but this is mostly I think from him napping. One of the things that I've noticed in the past week is that because I know that I'm starting to get in a nap time routine that I can put him down and have him stay asleep for a nap is it's been I've been really able to enjoy him when he's awake a lot more because the newborn period is so intense when they just have to be held all the time and it's wonderful but you start to feel like I can't ever put this baby down I can't do anything unless the baby's in my arms or in a baby carrier. And sometimes you wanna do other things or you just want a few minutes to decompress from baby. And so knowing that he's gonna have that nap time has been really nice to me and it's made it so nice when he's awake because I feel really free to just play with him and talk to him and, and everything because I know that I am gonna get that break to get other things done. So it's okay to take some time just to play with him and enjoy him. And I know my light, my light's going here, y'all, so I'll try and finish up because it's late in the evening. And I think it sounds like we've got somebody upset out front, too. But overall, I feel like the last week's been really positive, and I feel kind of like both of us are starting to, to, to move out of that, real the intensity of the newborn period and more into to being settled. I feel good. I did something to my back again, so that's really hurting. I actually ended up taking ibuprofen again. I wish that would stop happening, but, um, you know, overall I feel really good. I, I definitely feel better or feel ready to kind of start 
like, okay, let's, let's get back to walking, let's get back to fitness, some sort of fitness, something to, to get up and get moving some. Um, so I need to really, I really need to get back into the walking. I think my hesitation has been that I have a walk scheduled with my little ones, but it happens to be during Phoenix's nap time. And so I found myself feeling a little reluctant to go walk and even be away because what if he started crying while we were away, even though I've got older kids that I could say, you know, pick him up if he starts crying while we're walking. So I probably really just need to do that and go take the walk and not worry because he's happy with the older kids walking with him. And I know he won't be waking up from hunger because he will have just nursed um, a little bit before. So anyways... But I definitely am feeling like I want to start getting back into some walking or something. I was disappointed at my visit last week because I, you know, only lost like a pound in five weeks. But that is what it is. But I still feel like, okay, well, at least if I'm walking, I know I'm doing everything that I should be doing right now. Um, and maybe would like to start getting back into a workout. But I feel like first I need to get a couple weeks of walking uh, under, you know, under my belt. <clears throat> so with that... Um, we'll keep doing updates. I've got so much to share like with the kids and everything and I'm going to really try and start doing some more clips. So I've got a couple of little daily life clips. One's really small of Corwin playing with Play-Doh and the other is Phoenix playing under his little play gym. So with that, I'm going to go figure out what's going on out front um, and, uh, and then I'll put those clips on and get this uploaded for y'all. So I hope that you have a blessed week and I'll talk to you soon. Can you show me your noodles? Oh, that's a pretty cool noodle. You have made a lot of noodles. What else can it do? Oh, Phoenix isn't too sure about the noodles. hard to make. It was hard to make. I'm going to clean this up. Are you going to take the picture? I'm watching you. Sounds like we may be having a problem in the other room, though, so I think we're going to have to say goodbye. Kissing <laughs> air at you. <laughs> he keeps punching his, his toy. He keeps punching the monkey. Say something. It's got a button.